Today we're going to talk about an issue that uh, many of us have during galaxy season, which is that you have telescopes that can be small refractors or like me, low focal lengths, hyperstar or RASA, and you might have paired it with large sensor cameras like the ASI uh, 2600mm or RM Cool. So you have a huge field of view for a small target in the middle of your field of view. And especially when you have that huge sensor with a lot of pixels to process, if you're using PixInsight with the weighted batch pre-processing script, it's going to take forever to actually stack. And for me, since I'm taking short exposures from Tokyo, maybe 30 seconds to 60 seconds long, I end up with a lot of exposures. So when I process an image that I took over two nights, the processing files on their own, they take several hundreds of gigabytes of data and they take like hours to stack and to integrate. It's such a waste of time. Is there something we can do about this? Yes, yes, we can. We can, before doing all of the pre-processing, pre-crop on the area that we want. And I'll quickly go through how to do that with uh, an image of M51, uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy, or in Japanese, the Komochi Ginga, which literally means the galaxy with a child. I love that name. And it so happens that this galaxy is really tiny in my field of view. Look at this particular image. So this is without calibration, so don't worry about all those rings there. And you can see the uh, the M51 galaxy is there at the center and it's like tiny. So if I wanted to concentrate on just this galaxy, I might take like something like this field of view, right? Across my whole image. And yet I am going to stack over the whole image. If you're using local normalization as well to, uh, to kind of equalize the light pollution gradients, it's going to take literally forever. So for now, let me open the batch pre-processing script and we're going to do one run without any registration which is star alignment or any local normalization or anything really besides the initial calibration you could do that manually as well but you know it's easier with the w uh, with the weighted batch pre-processing if you haven't done like manual calibration of your frames before so that's what we're going to do okay we are now in the weighted batch pre-processing script and i can do my usual stuff i'm going to add my bias frames and here they are i'm adding them all i can add my flat frames here i have them for my l filter that i used last night okay and now i can add my light frames and i'm just going to add everything from now Okay, and now that I have all of my frames, so calibration frames and light frames, I don't use darks, by the way, with my camera, it doesn't seem to be necessary as long as I have bias frames. I will be disabling everything. All of these subframe wait weighting, uh, image registra registration, astrometric solution, image integration disabled. You could keep the subframe weighting if you wanted, but I'm just going to uncheck everything, select my output folder, and I'm going to call it M51. And there we are. So what this is going to do is it's going to do two things only. It's going to do a calibration of the frames and a debayering of the frames. And you can see that with the uh, pipeline tab here where we have the integration of the bias frames, calibration of the flat frames with the bias frames, integration of the flat frames, calibration of the light frames with all of the rest and then the bearing nothing else will happen let's run this and we're done with the initial pre-processing which is just calibrating and debearing the frames there's no way around this and it took me around 14 minutes in total so that's probably the step that is going to take the longest now we can go for the next step the magic happens after this uh, pre-processing with calibration and debearing let's open one of the debayered frames so let's have a look. I'm just going to pick one at random. We're going to do a control click on the auto uh, on the screen's transfer function so that we can see what it looks like. And we do have M51 like chilling out completely in the middle of a huge star field. Okay, I could of course process this image as is. It's always fun to see like a small galaxy lost in a huge star field. But if I want to really like center on the galaxy, what I'm going to open is a dynamic crop process. Here we are, and I could say that something like this. 
is what I more or less want. I want to give a bit of margin because there will be uh, some more cropping due to dithering and that kind of stuff. But that should be enough. I have the galaxy and this is a much smaller area than the full image. I'm just, I'm even going to make it smaller just like this so that I can do really quick weighted batch pre-processing in the end, okay? So I'm not gonna validate on that. What I'm going to do is on the canvas of, of PixInsight somewhere, I'm gonna right click and select image container. And then in image container, I am going to click on this folder icon and I am going to select all of the debayered frames that we just created via the weighted batch pre-processing. I'm gonna open that and I have them all selected. And what I'll next do is I'll take this uh, little, uh, I, no, I'll set an output di directory. So M51, I'll add something like cropped. Select this folder and then, and then I can drag this arrow to the, to the bottom bar of my dynamic crop process. This will apply the dynamic crop to all of my images. I do believe that if we set those parameters in the normal crop feature of PixInsight, it would take even less time, but yeah, whatever. Dynamic crop is fine. I'm gonna release the mouse. And now PixInsight will go and crop all of those images. You can see it's taking a bit less than one second per image, I would say. So I'd expect in roughly four, three or four minutes that we'll get all of the cropped images. And we're done and it took far less time than this. So what we end up with under the cropped folder here is all of my cropped images uh, after that are also debayered. So let's open one of them at random and control click. And now you can see we're centered on the galaxy, right? So we have tightened our field of view. And now I can go back to my weighted batch pre-processing. I'm going to remove my bias frames. I'm going to remove my flat frames. I'm going to remove my light frames. I'm going to add lights from M51 from my processed uh, folder and under cropped. I'm going to add everything under cropped. Okay, and now PixInsight will understand that all of this doesn't need calibration because I, I haven't selected any calibration frames. And now I can go and configure w, uh, WBPP, weight, uh, weighted batch pre-processing for maximum speed or quality because I have such a small field of view with few pixels. Now I'm just going to go with the maximum quality with no compromises. So we have the local norm normalization enabled and I'm going to enable the subframe weighting, the image registration, the astrometric solution, and the image integration. Note that I could have done this weighting before cropping and it probably would give better results because it, will, it would have more stars to work from. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like up, up to you. You can add this step before the, the cropping or not. Uh, I am going to uh, change my folder to say like uh, maybe M51 cropped. Here we are, select folder. And before we press the run button, there is one more thing we need to do. I need to go to calibration, select light, light and uncheck CFA image uh, because otherwise PixInsight will do a debayering of the frames, which is not needed uh, since we've already done it in the previous step. So CFE settings is unchecked now and I have my output directory. I have everything set correctly. I'm gonna click on uh, run. And you can see it tells me there's no calibration frames, et cetera, et cetera. And it's gonna take a working space of 2.94 gigabytes where I'm used to like hundreds are, maybe for this process it would be like 50 to 100. So obviously it's gonna take less disk space and probably much less time as well. So let's click con continue and see how long it takes, which normally would be hours, but I'll uh, get back to you once it's actually done. And by the way, while we're waiting for the process to run, you may want to go down below, uh, leave a comment, click that like button, click that subscribe button, and we'll, in which case, welcome to the channel. And also, if you're feeling very generous and you want to support and help me make more videos, you could join my Patreon or my channel to support me financially. It makes a huge, huge difference, and it's thanks to you guys that this channel is possible. So thank you so much. Anyway, let me wait for the weighted batch pre-processing to be done. And we're done. The process is done in 12 minutes, including just five minutes for local normalization, which if you have a large sensor camera like uh, any of the IMX5, 
7.1 cameras out there, you know is uh, it's pretty amazing. So it took very little time, very little disk space, and we have our image ready for us. Let's have a look. So here we have it. You can see that uh, PixInsight tagged it with a mono kind of extension because we told it there was no CFA Bayer matrix, but it still understood that it was a color image and it dealt with each of the color channels separately. And I opened uh, our master and let's have a look. Oh, wow, this is under the full moon, guys. Single night. Oh, I'm going to add more frames to this. Oh, sorry. I'm getting too excited with uh, with images as always, but neat, neat. So that's it. You can simply use this method to crop on the relevant region of your image before you do the weighted batch pre-processing. We went down from hours to minutes, maybe 40 minutes for the whole process when you don't want to wait. If you're taking small targets with a wide field of view, like many of you guys and me are doing during this galaxy season. So what do you think of this method? Do you think there are issues with it? Do you have advice on how to make it better? Is there a hidden setting in weighted batch pre-processing that I don't know about that can do this crop automatically? <laughs> without just doing it at the end, please let me know, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel even more, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member here on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.